Business correspondent Adam Parsons has been investigating. On Britain's high streets, this has been a year of turbulence. Big brands struggling, even closing down, battered by the challenges of internet rivals and also by Britain's unpredictable economy. It's a time when even the biggest names in British retail have felt nervous. So what's going on? Is the high street really under attack or is there something a bit more complex happening? Jacqueline Gold has spent a lifetime turning Anne Summers into a high street staple. But what if she could wind back the retail clock? If you're starting out today, I think you would start with an online presence and then expand from there and then expand your channels. It's important to have a presence on the high street. It also helps with brand awareness. Um, and obviously, you know, most retailers would not want to uh, close their, their prominent stores and, and, and we're absolutely the same. But you will see retailers consolidate down loss-making stores. And that's already happening. High street favourites are closing shops. Well, there's been a lot of gloomy news about British retail in recent times, about stores closing, profit warnings and job losses. But there is another side to all this. Here in Watford, £180 million is being spent on expanding the shopping centre. So what can we learn from that about the state of Britain's retail industry? The company behind this is Intu, which owns 20 of the nation's biggest shopping centres, today dotted with cinemas, restaurants, a ski slope and even the occasional beach. Its boss told me that good retailers embrace the worlds of both bricks and clicks. The city centre um, shopping centres with a full range of, of attractions are actually doing fine. And, and I guess what's happening is the, the gulf is widening at the moment between the good destinations and they're not so good. Many retailers think it's unfair that business rates are based on property, so a high street chain pays out a lot more than an online company. It's a theme echoed by this man, one of the most respected retailers in the country, an ardent critic of business rates. When an Amazon delivery is delivered to someone's home in that cardboard box that we all think is a bit excessive, where does it go? It goes in the bin or you take it to the tip. That process is paid for by business rates, by the very retailer who lost that sale, were outcompeted for that sale by Amazon, has paid the tax that paid for that service that Amazon in effect used for free. So it's the unbalancing of the playing field that I think is fundamentally wrong. His solution is radical. Cut business rates, put up VAT, and think about extra charges on online firms. If you look at the numbers, it's probably 2% on VAT would allow you to more than half the business rate burden for, for retail. The other way you could do it is some kind of delivery tax rather than a sales tax. So you, you tax the channel, you have a unique tax that's only payable when you bypass retail space and go direct to a consumer's home. British retail has always been a turbulent world where trends move fast, but the internet has changed the parameters. Our shops aren't all dying off, but the ones that remain face a testing world of new, complex challenges. Adam Parsons, Sky News.